In this video, you'll learn how to make this text morph effect really simply all inside After Effects. This text morphing effect uses a surprisingly simple technique and the text remains completely editable. Plus this project file is available to download for free in the description, including all the textures. So have a dive in and pull out some elements you might want to use in your own projects. So all of these effects, the blurs, the textures are happening inside this composition. The actual text morphing is happening inside this composition here with just a few layers. So let's delete all of these and start from scratch. Let's make sure our type tool is selected draw out a text box, type something in, and let's align that to the center of our comp. And I'm using a nice heavy typeface called Fat Frank. To keep it simple, let's morph between the words yes and no. And of course we can change these later. So let's keep yes in this text layer, duplicate it with Control or Command D, and in this second type layer, let's type no. Now we only need to animate one property on these layers, and that is opacity. So let's open that up by pressing T on our keyboard, and for our first layer, the yes, we are gonna keyframe its opacity at 100 at one second in, and we want this morph to last about two seconds. So at three seconds, which is two seconds later, let's drag this down to 0%, and we'll do the opposite for no, keyframe it at two seconds at 100%, and then at one second in, down at 0%. And let's select those keyframes and easy ease them by pressing F9, so it's just a little bit smoother. So now we've essentially got a cross dissolve fading from one text to the other. And all the morphing is gonna be on a new adjustment layer, and let's rename that morph effects because we always label our layers. And we're gonna use a method that you might have used before and that is to blur the heck out of this and then sharpen it. So let's add a Gaussian blur effect. And at the start of this transition, let's keyframe its blurriness at zero pixels. And we'll copy that keyframe and paste it at the end as well. And then in the middle, let's get very blurry. Let's go all the way up to 100. And let's easy use those outside keyframes as well too. So now it's blurring in the middle and at that middle state, we can barely tell that it's any of those words at all. And that's good. So now let's sharpen this blur to turn it into some nice crisp shapes. And to sharpen it, we are going to add a levels effect. Now levels is normally used to adjust the color channels of your footage by moving the black and white points, but we can change that from editing the RGB values to editing the alpha channel, which is the transparency or the opacity of the composition. Now you must make sure that you don't have a background on your comp. Mine is this pale gray at the moment, but that's not an actual layer. If, if we toggle on and off the transparency grid, we can see that really this is just some dark text over nothing at all. Now back to the levels. And all we need to do is to bring these two outside triangles closer to the center. And as we do that, you can see it starts to really crunch those transparent values. And the closer these triangles get to the center, the less of those medium transparent values we get. Everything is either fully transparent or fully opaque. So let's get these triangles really close and depending on whereabouts on this triangle they are, the darker or bigger the blob is going to be. So if we move these close to the right, it's gonna be a lot skinnier. So try to aim somewhere around the middle and really just try to match the total surface area that your text has beforehand. And it's also a good idea to leave a bit of a small gap between these triangles because if we get them right up close next to one another, we get this really blocky edge where we can see every pixel. And that's just too sharp. So let's soften that a bit by just leaving these slightly spread out there. Now let's look at what we have. And this is pretty close. That's pretty much the foundation for this effect. We're essentially just fading between two text layers and blurring it so we get this blob in the middle, which is a mix of both of the words. Now to add some more nuance to this effect, we can add some extra motion to this morph. And we can do that by adding a turbulent displace effect. And let's put that above our blur as well in the effect stack. And for the moment, let's hide our Gaussian blur and levels as well. So we can see a bit clearer what the turbulent displace is doing. Right now it's just warping our text. So let's turn the size down from 100 to 50. And at the start of the animation, let's keyframe the amount at zero. So it's not warping our text at all. And then halfway through the transition, keyframe it at 50, which will be a maximum warping. And then at the end, back down to zero. So it goes from no warping, warped a bit, and then back to normal. To add a bit more motion, we are gonna animate the evolution property as well. So let's keyframe that at zero at the start, and then at the end of the transition at around 180. And you can tweak that depending on how much motion you want. All right, so now as it warps, there is motion within that warp. And let's easy ease these outer keyframes on the amount as well with F9. All right, so now our text has a bit of motion in there as it morphs. And then once we add those blurs and levels on top, we can see there is a subtle difference to where there was before. And that is in this initial state, 
a yes is already becoming less like yes before it fades into the no. Some of the areas start to move and that little touch really helps with this illusion. It helps our brain imagine that these parts of the Y are liquefying and then moving of their own volition into that no shape. They're not just staying static, being blurred and then crisped out of there. When really that's what's happening and we're just tricking our brain. And of course we can change our text to anything we want. So we can go from yes and then on this second word we can change that to yeah and let's see how that looks. That's not bad, but it does work better if the words are of similar length because otherwise the outside letters are just gonna fade on from nothing, which is a fine effect in itself, but it doesn't really look like this first word is reforming to make that second one. And it kind of looks like the second word is maybe emerging out of some water as seen from above, which could look very cool. So let's change that back for now. Now let's go back to that top comp with all the effects. And I'm gonna quickly run through everything happening in this comp to get this more inky blurry effect. And I've covered a lot of these in depth in more detail on other videos in my channel. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on each one. You can check those videos out way up here. And if you're feeling generous, give this video a cheeky like, it really does help out the channel. So I'm gonna turn all of the layers off and start from the bottom, which is just a white solid as the background. Then we have a vignette, which is just a black solid with a feathered mask creating that vignette effect. And then we have a looping texture, which just adds a bit of dark grit to the background and that is set to multiply. And then on top of that, we have our text morph, which we have just created. And then we have another looping texture, but this one is set to screen. So we get a bit of white grit over the top of everything. And then we have another pre-comp and this one is fractal noise. And I did not have this visible in the final result, but inside that comp, we just have a solid with fractal noise applied to it. And I'm just animating the evolution. And you'll see why I've added that fractal noise in the next layer, which is effects. And I'm gonna turn all of these off and start again from the top. The first effect is posterize time, which lowers the frame rate to 12 frames per second. And that just cuts out a bit of that smooth artificial motion from the morph effect and makes it feel just a tiny bit less digital. Then we've got a Gaussian blur set to four pixels and that just softens everything up. And then we have another blur, a camera lens blur. And we're using that fractal noise layer as a blur map. So what is this doing? This is taking color data from that fractal noise effect and everything that's white in this fractal noise throughout the animation, which changes, it will blur up to six pixels depending on how white it is. So that's why some areas are a bit blurrier than others. And I like this effect. It just makes it look like there is a little more depth or something, you know, weird like this is microscopic that we're zooming in on. And we have such a shallow depth of field that slight differences are making some areas out of focus. And it just looks kind of neat and adds more interest to what is essentially text on the background. Then I have an invert effect, which I didn't have on earlier, but I thought I'd put it on here because this is all black and white. So inverting it makes it look pretty cool as well. But let's turn that off. And then we have a curves effect, which just adds a tiny bit of contrast and adds some blues to the shadows. And then finally, we have a 6% noise over the top of everything. So together, I think we can agree this just adds a bit more texture and nuance to that original animation. And again, this project file is available to download for free down in the description with the textures and everything. So go nuts, rip it apart, play around with it and use some of these techniques in your own projects. If you'd like to learn animation and motion design techniques, I've got a playlist of some of the best tutorials on this channel for you to take a look at. I'll see you in the next one.